Hi guys, Jamie Sullins here. Uh, I want to apologize for the poor video quality here, but I'm a crazy busy mom and business owner, and I'm using a bit of extra time that I've been given to share a story with you guys. So probably the poorest quality video, but one of the best stories that I'll be able to share with you. Just in case you didn't know, I actually joined a group for my church, uh, which included some of my family this past weekend and we headed down to Baton Rouge, Louisiana to help out with some of the flood relief in assisting the victims down there. We didn't really know what we were getting into. We just packed up some work clothes and headed down that way. Um, there's a church down there that was gracious enough to let us stay there and some of their classrooms on some air mattresses. And then we worked with another church called The Healing Place and we were helping them with the flood relief efforts. So, I had an absolutely amazing time. I've taken many, many different mission trips, um, some of them costing a lot of money, and this one did not cost me anything at all, uh, just some time. And I will tell you that it was probably the trip that affected me the most, and that I feel like I had the greatest impact. And it was all because of one day. On Saturday, we started out with the Healing Place and we actually joined forces with Operation Blessing, which is an organization um, that you probably see on the Christian Broadcast Network and with the 700 Club. We partnered with them and they had some families picked out that they wanted us to work with. And we headed to the house of Jan and James. Didn't really know much going into it, just knew their name and that they needed help. So we showed up at their house. There was a team of, I think, about 10 of us that showed up at their house. And the, the uh, group foreman walked in to see what needed done as I spoke with Jan, the, the woman of the home. She was, I would say, probably my mom's age, a little bit older. Uh, just a sweet, sweet woman. Before we even walked in, she offered me water. Um, here is a, a woman that's lost everything, absolutely everything, and she's offering me what she has. Um, and I said, oh, no, no, no. We brought all that with us. So, walked into their home, and instantly my breath was taken away by two different things. Um, of course, the devastation that I saw, their home was destroyed. Uh, all their belongings were already cleared out of the home for the most part. Uh, there was no furniture in there. You could tell where the water had been probably four foot high inside the home. You could tell that by the rippling in the wallpaper and the mold starting to grow on the walls. But really what I noticed that, that truly took my breath away was the, the time and the energy that this woman had spent on her home and her love for all things antiques, which is a shared love that I have. She had the most amazing chandeliers in this home. The cabinetry was just gorgeous. The, the posts in the living room, beautiful. The wallpaper, antiqued wallpaper, it was absolutely gorgeous. I could tell instantly that this home was amazing before this flood hit. I walked further into the home, walked past the guest bathroom and saw the clawfoot tub. I saw the antique punch bowl that had been turned into a vanity sink. And I, I stopped right there and I went and found Jan and I just grabbed her and I said, you have an amazingly gorgeous home. And right then and there, she started to flood with tears and she said, Thank you. And I was just taken back by the beauty of what was still able to be seen in the devastation. So the day went on, we tore apart this house. We stripped it of all its sheetrock. We took it down to the studs in every single room. 
we took out every single piece of furniture. One piece that, that broke my heart. I told you it was clear to furniture. There were still a few pieces left. We were actually working in her laundry room at this point, and she had a gorgeous antique buffet. We were able to salvage the mirror, take it off, and it was able to be saved. And we went to remove this large buffet two of the guys on my team and they were carrying it out to the street for the dump trucks to pick up and they went to pick it up and the piece that they were holding fell off in their hand and they just looked at me and I said well just set it on top and try to grab it again they put it on top they tried to grab it again and that piece fell apart too so we had to go to plan b which was to just pull apart this gorgeous gorgeous piece of furniture and just take it out to the curb in pieces but here's, here's the best story. Jan and I formed an amazing, amazing connection. This woman and I became instant friends. Yes, it was the love of antiques. Um, her husband was actually a turkey hunter and got to talk to my husband about hunting. Turns out that they were actually in the same place at the same time earlier in the year hunting. Um, but it was beyond that. It was beyond those surface things that we shared. We just shared a connection that was absolutely amazing. I can't even put it into words. But Jan was overwhelmed. She was overwhelmed in the decisions that she had to make in this situation because she wanted to salvage everything. She saw the beauty in these ruined and destroyed items too. She knew that some of them could be restored and she wanted to restore them all, but she knew that she couldn't. Once she found out that I knew antiques and I knew restoration of antiques as well, she entrusted me with making some decisions. They kept asking her questions of, do we save this? Do we not? What do we do with this? What do we do with this? And she finally looked at me and she said, Jamie, can you do this for me? She, she was just tapped out. She couldn't make any more decisions. Um, and I was happy to do that for her. And as I told this story to someone else on our team, she just stopped and she looked at me and, and tears flooded down her face. And she said, you'll never believe what I just heard in my mind. And I said, what? And she said, the Lord just told me, you need to do the same thing. You need to release decisions to me. And the minute she said that to me, tears started flooding my eyes. How many times do we think that we have to make every single decision in our life? We feel like we have to, but we don't. Our Lord is willing to make those decisions if we will release them to him, just like Jan released those decisions to me. The, the honor that she gave me in having that ability that she trusted me with her items. I mean, I, I can't put that into words, how that made me feel that she trusted me that much. And what would our heavenly father feel if we did the same thing, if we just trusted him with all the decisions that we have to make. Sometimes we say we trust him, but do you really? Are you willing to release those decisions to him to make? So that's probably the takeaway from this situation. So many things happened this weekend that honestly I cannot put into words, but meeting Jan and James was so impactful to me. Um, just to tell you guys a little bit of the extent, we actually exchanged phone numbers and that story that I just told you happened on Saturday, today's Tuesday, and we have texted back and forth every single day. So I did gain a friend in this, um, in just stepping out and, and being willing to just help someone. I mean, I, I don't have huge muscles. I can't do big, huge things, but I can give someone a hug. I can tell them that that I can't imagine what they're going through. I can tell them that my heart goes out to them and I can just tell them, I'm here. I'm here to help. And every single one of us can do that. So here's your two lessons for today. Are you willing to give control of your decisions to someone else? Hopefully it is Jesus Christ. And are you willing to step outside of your world just to help someone else? It doesn't have to be a huge thing, small things can make a huge impact. So I challenge you today to do those two things. Release things to Jesus Christ and step outside of your world to see 
who around you needs help. It doesn't have to be traveling down to Baton Rouge. It could be your next door neighbor. It could be a family member. It could be someone in your own home that needs help that you could help. So just look around you for people that need help and offer to do that. And I promise you, it will be paid back to you over and over and over again. Thanks so much for listening to me and I hope this brought value to your day. Love you guys. Bye-bye.